This is the story of Thumbelina. Once upon a time, there was a sad, barren lady who desperately wanted to have a child of her own. So she went to a witch who gave her a seed and told her to plant it. The woman went home and planted it in her organic rooftop container garden. And eventually, a tiny, organic, pesticide-free lady grew. And the woman called her Thumbelina. Get it? Because she's the size of a thumb. One day, as Thumbelina was doing downward facing dog on an Arctic berry Listerine breath strip, a toad crept in and kidnapped her. She took Thumbelina back to her son so that she would marry him, but he was totally out of shape and ate flies, which was a huge turnoff for the snobby vegan Thumbelina. So Thumbelina sailed away on a leaf, but soon enough, a beetle swooped down and picked her up. What kind of beetle, you ask? Was not John, Paul, George, nor Ringo. Twas a cockchafer. Ah yes, the majestic cockchafer, which also happened to be Thumbelina's nickname in college, for reasons unbeknownst to me. So the cockchafer flew the tiny little lady to a tree, where there were even more cockchafers. The cockchafer started talking a whole lot of shit to Thumbelina, like how she had two legs and no feelers, and that was ugly to them. It didn't faze the pretentious health nut, but the cockchafer felt bad anyway, so he flew her back down to the woods where she lived for the remainder of the summer. She soon discovered a plethora of naturally occurring kale, collards, and carrots for her disgusting juices. When it got cold, she found a field mouse who let her stay at his place for the winter in exchange for cooking and cleaning. For weeks, they worked out together, did yoga together, and even ate her weird gluten-free cooking together, even though none of them had celiac disease. But soon enough, Thumbelina realized that the mouse was an asshole, a misogynist, a homophobe, a racist, and generally just a bigot. After his repeated attempts at coming on to her, Thumbelina got fed up and left. On her journey back, she came across a dead bird. So she placed a blanket over him and used all of her pseudo-spiritual energy to bring him back to life. Lo and behold, it worked, though it may not have been totally dead to begin with. The bird opened his tiny little bird eyes and Thumbelina rejoiced. She spent the rest of the winter nursing him back to health using whatever gross vegetable smoothies she had left. And the ever grateful bird flew her to a leaf where she found a tiny little man with tiny little wings and a tiny little crown. The tiny prince put his tiny crown on her head and asked her to marry him. It was just then that Thumbelina realized that her psychic slash hypnotist told her that she would meet the love of her life when the second planet aligned with the shockers of Jupiter or some shit like that. So she said yes. The end. Moral of the story, who f***ing knows? Come back next time when I'll tell you the story of Billy Mays and his amazing maze of maze.